Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. And fresh off all that new Daredevil Born Again Season 1 footage recently and John Bernthal coming back as his version of Punisher during Season 1 of that, we just learned about Marvel's larger plans to do revivals and new seasons of a bunch of other TV shows, starting with some of the Netflix Defenders characters. Daredevil apparently is just the beginning. It was just reported recently Punisher is supposed to get a new season of his own show. A lot of you have been asking for that, like, give Punisher season three. And you know how Marvel is, I really can't say anything anyway, but I care about Frank deeply, and no matter how much Frank grows, he's always going to be the same. So we'll break it all down and what their plans were for Punisher Season 3 when it was still on Netflix because the person who did the Punisher Netflix series is essentially doing Daredevil Born Again now. Like Kevin Feige hired the Punisher people to come back and make Daredevil Born Again. So it is no coincidence that there's all this Punisher stuff happening with John Bernthal's version of the character. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We have the Deadpool 3 trailer coming in a couple days. There's a bunch of Super Bowl trailers. Of course, I will do videos for everything. I literally just did a much bigger video for all the Daredevil Born Again episode 1 footage we just got with Daredevil vs. Bullseye, both of them in their new comic book suits. It's just the beginning. We've been talking about this since the Echo episodes earlier this year because Marvel officially canonized all the old Netflix Defender shows. Punisher technically wasn't on the Defenders. He didn't show up during that series, but he's included in the larger Marvel Netflix umbrella characters of shows. This is like Kevin Feige's chief lieutenant that runs most of Marvel television under Marvel Studios. He was talking about canonizing all the Marvel Netflix stuff. But basically, everybody is slowly coming back, starting with Daredevil, Kingpin during Spider-Man No Way Home, Hawkeye, Echo, Bullseye just came back in all these new scenes from Daredevil Born Again Episode 1, and it is the version of Bullseye from the Daredevil Netflix series. We learned that John Bernthal's version of the Punisher from the Netflix series has a major story arc during Daredevil Born Again Season 1. I'll get into what that is in a second. We also heard about Kristen Ritter coming back as her version of Jessica Jones. She literally just posted a picture of herself teasing her return again when all these Daredevil scenes were dropping recently. Notice she's still wearing the shirt from the Jessica Jones Netflix series here, very clearly teasing with her caption. I just did a video about them bringing back a couple versions of Iron Fist in new TV series. Like they're slowly folding in basically all these characters. But probably the bigger news this past week, we learned Marvel has a more formal plan to revive a bunch more TV shows, not just the Netflix Marvel shows, but other TV shows made before Kevin Feige and Marvel Studios took over production on all these. Probably the most relevant example of that is X-Men the Animated Series. X-Men the Animated Series is essentially becoming X-Men 97. That's going to air before Deadpool 3 comes out to sort of set up the idea of mutants X-Men coming back to the MCU. We should get a trailer for that pretty soon because they made it all shiny and nice, but essentially it's like the next season of X-Men the Animated Series under a different title. The same way that Daredevil Born Again is Daredevil Season 4 under a slightly different title from the Netflix series. And apparently it's the same idea with John Bernthal's version of The Punisher. It would basically be a different version of what they originally intended to do for Punisher Season 3 when it was still on Netflix. Some of you probably realize this, but essentially they're kind of doing what they did during the Netflix series with all these characters too. Like you start with Daredevil, then you slowly start cameoing, crossing over other Defenders characters on his show, other shows, then they all go off to their own spinoff TV shows. Now they're basically doing it again under the Marvel Studios banner on Disney+. Plus. Punisher being very relevant to this because he started on Daredevil Season 2, then went on to Punisher Season 1. Now the person who made the Punisher Netflix series was just brought back by Kevin Feige to make Daredevil Born Again with a bunch of the Netflix crew, like the fight coordinators, other creatives. There's going to be a huge Punisher arc during Season 1 of Daredevil Born Again. It totally makes sense. It's in preparation for Punisher getting a new season of his own series. Now, it would be a slightly shortened season. It wouldn't be the same number of episodes as Daredevil Born Again or as the original Punisher series because they used to get 10 to 13 episodes per season. In no idea what the title would be because, for instance, they didn't call Daredevil Born Again Daredevil Season 4 even though that's kind of what it is and this would be Punisher Season 3. So they give it some other title like The Punisher dropping the Marvel ahead of it or they call it like Punisher Max. That'd be a funny dig at HBO Max and it would be a cool reference to the comics. The only problem there with Punisher with using some of his comic book titles is that most of his comic book titles go way too hard for Disney+. Plus. 
The upside, though, is that they can still do it TVMA, like Echo was TVMA. One of my criticisms there, though, is that Echo didn't really need the TVMA rating because it was actually pretty tame relative to, like, the Marvel Netflix series. Like, Punisher Netflix went way harder, Daredevil Netflix, pretty much all the Marvel Netflix series went way harder. There's still a question as to whether or not Daredevil Born Again is also going to be TVMA, but this is what Karen Page's face looked like in the scenes that they were filming with the Daredevil versus Bullseye fight scene. So if blood is covering her face, then maybe it will also be TVMA. Right now, Marvel's plan for bringing back John Bernthal's Punisher is coming back during Daredevil Born Again Season 1. He did not get snapped. He spent the five-year time jump basically doing the same thing that Hawkeye Ronan, Daredevil did, going into overdrive, taking out the worst of the worst criminals that did not get snapped. The only real difference between Punisher, Daredevil, and Hawkeye is that unlike Hawkeye, they stayed local to New York City during that period. Hawkeye was going all over the world taking out the mob, other big villains who survived the snap in other parts of the planet. Really good example of this is all these Daredevil versus Echo fight scenes were from that five-year time jump period. So you have to picture when that's happening, Kingpin also had been released from jail where he had gone after Daredevil season three. While he's rebuilding his power base, the cops basically let him do whatever he wants. He's already pretty powerful at this point in the five-year time jump. You have to picture Punisher going crazy left and right, killing all the worst criminals around New York City while this is happening, with Kingpin and Daredevil both kind of doing their own thing too, respectively. They probably cross paths a couple times. It'd be hard not to with half the number of people in the area. Kingpin did reference Daredevil during that five-year time jump. He made it sound like Daredevil kept coming after him, his men, many times during that period, and he treated it like clockwork, like he wasn't surprised that Echo had a fight with him. He was more impressed that she survived the fight, like, oh, you actually did pretty good, you survived. Punisher and Kingpin's relationship would also be similar. Most of this goes back to their prison fight, where they have it out the same way Daredevil and Kingpin eventually did. They have a similar relationship. Punisher basically told him he would kill him. Kingpin kind of told him the same thing, too. The whole difference between Punisher and Daredevil is that Punisher just doesn't care about putting Kingpin in prison, like doing things above board. He's just out killing Kingpin's men left and right. Dismantle his organization the old-fashioned way. Then post blip, after Avengers Endgame, everybody comes back, we have the events of Spider-Man No Way Home, Hawkeye, Echo, Kingpin gets the idea to run for mayor of New York City and sees his opportunity to get rid of Punisher, Daredevil, Spider-Man, Bullseye, pretty much all the heroes and any of the villains that Kingpin does not like in the New York City area or anybody that's giving him grief just in general. Just brand them as a vigilante, dangerous, look at all the people they're killing, we need to lock them up. Basically running for mayor on an anti-vigilante campaign. For example, one of the story arcs they're adapting from the comics is the recent Muse villain. This is a scene of him during Daredevil Born Again episode 1. Under Kingpin's definition, he'd be branded as another dangerous vigilante that needed to be locked up. And in the comics, one of the problems for Daredevil and the other heroes is that Muse is inspired to go after corrupt New York City police, judges, politicians, but he's even more hardcore than Punisher, does things in a really gruesome way, killing a ton of people, creating these art murals using their bodies. And in a lot of his crime scenes, he draws references to the Punisher, specifically like other vigilantes in this WTF art. So you have to imagine Muse here during Daredevil Born Again doing something similar and then Kingpin who's running for mayor talking about getting rid of all the dangerous people in New York City, dangerous vigilantes, pointing at examples like Muse here and using it as a way to go after Punisher, Daredevil, Spider-Man, all these other vigilantes, giving him the excuse that he was looking for this whole time. And as mayor, he has the resources and the ability and the justification to hire villains to do his dirty work. You have to imagine him hiring Spider-Man villains, for instance, who are currently locked up. If he's going to be in Spider-Man 4, he should be the one to hire the Sinister Six to go after Spider-Man. Like, he should just hire a bunch of Spider-Man villains to get rid of all vigilantes, and they just happen to go after Spider-Man. Another good example during Daredevil Born Again is the White Tiger character from the comics is going to be a big person during the season. This is what he's going to look like during Episode 1. Kingpin probably tries to make an example of him, too. When the season picks up, Punisher was originally supposed to be going after corrupt cops like the ones helping Kingpin here during the five-year time jump. That might change a little bit, but the concept is still the same. Kingpin uses his campaign as an excuse to get rid of Punisher, and people like Punisher. It sounds like that's what leads to him and Daredevil teaming up again, helping each other at night fight Kingpin's henchmen, other villains, and by day, Matt Murdock, the really good lawyer, helps out Frank Castle, citizen, stay out of serious jail time, or if he does have to go to jail, help him as much as he can. 
Then Punisher leaves, goes off to his solo series, what would essentially be Punisher season three, like a continuation of the Punisher Netflix series. Originally, the Punisher Netflix showrunner said season three would have brought Micro back because he sat out season two. Eben Moss Bacharach, though, is supposed to be playing the brand new version of The Thing in that Fantastic Four movie, so he's kind of off the table unless they recast the Micro character. He also said Punisher would have become more of comic book Punisher persona, going after criminals full time on the regular, like wearing the Punisher logo all the time, instead of laying low like he was when season two picked up. Season two was more about him protecting Amy, stopping Jigsaw. He had actively been trying to avoid going on any larger crusades to stop crime in the New York City area. That changed in the season two finale. That last moment of him going after the gang in the middle of their deal was a teaser for what season three would have felt like with him wearing the Punisher Skull logo full time, doing stuff like this on the regular in the episodes. And because he would have been back in New York City, there would have been more crossover with Daredevil, the other Defenders characters again, and now they're kind of doing a version of that already during Daredevil Born Again, like they're just kind of continuing that storyline. So it sounds like they do a new season of The Punisher, they just introduce more characters from The Punisher comics and just spin off some of the plot that they've set up through Echo and Daredevil Born Again. There are a couple big Punisher villains like Barracuda, Nick Cavella, mostly mob related characters that they haven't done yet. I think there was even a Punisher fan film that used the Nick Cavella character a while ago. But a really good example of this phenomenon is during the Echo post credit scene, Kingpin says he wants a meeting with the heads of all the major families working for him to discuss what's going on. You can actually just have Punisher going after all the heads of those families during his own series. Let me know in the comments, what do you want Punisher to be doing if he gets a brand new season of his own show? There's a bunch of big stuff coming up though, so if we hear any more about other Marvel Netflix characters coming back or other Netflix characters getting their own solo series, like doing a new Jessica Jones season, of course I'll do videos for that. And we should get that X-Men 97 trailer after the Deadpool 3 trailer pretty soon. Make sure you have alerts enabled for my channel so you don't miss any of that because there's a bunch of really big stuff coming up. Click here for that brand new Daredevil Born Again episode 1 teaser with all that brand new footage and click here for my new Deadpool 3 video and learn why he destroys the Marvel Universe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.